Hi everyone. Um, <clears throat> so, what I want to do is I usually just put videos out, record a video, and where that comes from is that I'll have a baby in, and, um, and I'll treat the baby, and then I'll get ideas. Um, <clears throat> I'll get ideas from what the baby's come in with for me to then do a video for you. So um, I wanted to do a few lives, try and keep them pretty regular to a Wednesday because I take that bit of time off in the morning from treating babies and do some of the social media. Um, and last week I did a Zoom, so I think the Instagram live is gonna be a bit easier for you just to jump on your phone when you're carrying a baby, feeding your baby. So try and make it easy for you. Um, but please do leave a comment for me what's the easiest way to kind of interact with these um, lives. So I put a bit of a name on um, today's live, which is how your birth, how your baby's birth affects your baby, how they are now. Um, and I'll try and explain that, but um, do ask me any questions. So leave a comment, ask me a question, and then I'll just ramble and everything all gets looped into one. We end up covering everything. And, and what, are, what I can say on here to you is what I'm saying to mums every day. You know, I saw six, eight babies yesterday. I tend to be going over very similar things. So once I can get that across to you, then you, uh, the whole uh, point of this is to help you understand your baby. So it's nice to be able to fix your baby. It'd be lovely to have a quick fix. I'm not sure if that's possible. Unfortunately, um, if there was a quick fix, then there'd be no babies with colic, would there? Because we just know what to do and then they'd be better. But I can help you get a really good understanding of what's wrong with your baby. So I've had mums come into me, you know, and they, they hand, give me the baby. Like, and, and it's like, can you fix my baby? My baby's broken. My baby hates me. I mean, literally mums crying in and saying my baby hates me um you know what a sad thing to kind of hear and for, and for that mum to think but there's reasons behind it okay and it's usually not usually it is is from the delivery so this is what gave me the idea to call this one about how your delivery affects your baby so if we go way back so I've been uh, osteopath for 26 years and treating babies for 26 years. So I saw my first baby when I first um, graduated. And as I was treating them and mums are coming in and not understanding what's going on with the baby, it even dawned to me because as a natural health practitioner, you try and look for the cause. So you dig deep, try and find the cause uh, that has made someone unwell or, um, you know, shoulder pain, back pain even, because I'm, I'm an osteopath, so that's what I'm treating as well. So what's the, also, what's happened to a baby? What's a baby done? Two week old baby, they don't have bad posture. They haven't injured themselves doing a sport. They've just done nothing. So why could, why possibly is a baby so upset and crying all the time and has the colic and things, and they're two week old and you can't, blame them for anything because they've done nothing. So what's the biggest thing that's happened in their life? Well, they've been born. What's one of the biggest things that's probably happened in all of our lives, we've been born. So that's how I got interested in it, thinking, okay, mums aren't getting, even I wasn't getting it quite then, 26 years ago, but that delivery was so big for the baby and how they're behaving now is something to do with that. Then I had a mum in just last week, she, baby's two weeks old, crying, colic, and be super upset, not sleeping, waking every hour, jumpy, uh, colicky, the whole lot. And she said, I got no idea what's going on with my baby, why my baby's like this. So I asked about her delivery. She'd had a four day delivery. It was slow, then it was fast, then induction, then the induction was stopped, then it was started again. You know, like four sets, one, twos, everything, ended in a C-section. She'd had everything. And that mum hadn't, put together that that stressful delivery had upset her baby. But here's what's even more important than that, because the mum's got a lot going on with the crying baby. She hadn't even been told that that could be a cause behind it. No one out there had said to her, your delivery can be making your baby upset now. So she just has a baby, I'm sure you get this. You got a baby and you don't get what's going on and you think they're upset and you, you think, why can't I handle this? Why am I a bad parent? Why can I not understand what's going on with my baby? So lots of the things I do 
is to help you with the understanding of what's going on with your baby. So it, um, if you have a newborn then put a comment up about how your delivery went and then we can chat about your delivery, you know, traumatic forceps, um, C-section, um, put a comment up and I can, um, we can talk through that. So remember your baby is crying due to things that happened at the delivery. So if you've seen my baby birth types, these are, the, these are how your baby looks. They're, they're kind of patterns that happens um, to your baby and you can visually see what's going on with your baby in this pattern due to the delivery had, they had. So a, uh, a, a traumatic delivery where the baby has been stuck. So they've got stuck, lots of um, contractions, possibly ended in forceps or von twos. That, I call that the um, little meerkat baby. Okay, so these babies have got a really strong neck. So the, the meerkat baby is the baby with a strong neck that's bobbing up and down here. So if they're like this, you know that that baby has had a traumatic delivery. But here's the deeper part. If, if your baby's doing this and you don't get why, why that's happening, the reason it's happening is you had this delivery. So that information allows you to know that you're, there's nothing wrong with your baby, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. That baby had a traumatic delivery. Then you might have the little frog baby. So they're like scrunched up in a tiny little ball and you have to hold them in the tiny little ball like this the whole time. They had a fast delivery. So they're inside you like this in the fetal position. They have the quick delivery and then they ping back in this like this. So these babies, they don't like laying on their back. They prefer laying on their side. So when they lay on their side, parents tend to then co-sleep with them and you're not meant to co-sleep, so you're worried about co-sleeping, so you've got all this tension going on, but it's because your baby is scrunched up in a little froggy position. That's why they like laying on their side and co-sleeping with you because your mattress is a bit softer, okay? So they don't mind sinking into it. So it's good to understand that your delivery has triggered your baby to be like that, and then that's why. So I personally would use the cranial osteopathy and we gently unwind them out so they can lay on their back. Same for the um, little meerkat baby who's very arching and stiff. They like laying on their front. So you always have to hold them on the front. So then you lay them on their front to sleep. And again, you're not really meant to do that. So then you worried about that. But the understanding, no one is saying to you, you had a traumatic delivery. Your baby's arching a lot. So they prefer this position because when you lay them on the back, they have to stretch out this way. So good to know. And osteopathy can help unwind them and soften them and allow them to lay on their back. So then they can go in the cot or whatever, wherever you're gonna put them. Babies that have also have a traumatic or very quick delivery, or um, something like a, even a planned C-section or an induction baby where it's come on really strong, those babies are quite buzzy. So it's a bit like they take on board that bit of stress from the delivery and they hold on to it. Now you might have been stressed at your delivery and you may still be stressed now, but you've got to get on with life of now looking after your little baby. But the baby just can just hold on to that. And again, you need to calm them down. I use the cranial osteopathy. Um, and, then, um, and then we just erase that out. So you just take that tension out of their nervous system and then they calm down. What's so amazing about a calm baby is it actually helps digestion. So the colic gets better, the feeding gets better because they're not thrashing around so much and when they're feeding, so you get a better feed because they're more full, you get a bit of a longer time in between and you get better feed again. So calming your baby down is a really big one. And again, that's cranial osteopathy or other calming techniques, you know, the skin to skin type things. My biggest tip for you at home is to be calm yourself and let your calmness rub off onto your baby because the baby definitely picks up on your stress. So there's, there's loads of research on this, really interesting, but the baby can feel what you're feeling. So if you're stressy, the baby will pick up onto that. Flip that to your advantage. Can you remain calm and pass that calmness to the baby? You can actually do that. And it's not necessarily through the breast milk, you know, through hormones and things in the breast milk, just by being next to them, you can calm them down. So that's a nice, uh, that's a big tip. 
my other favourite of helping from the uh, things from the delivery is um, breastfeeding. So if you're really struggling with the breastfeeding, this is very often with these meerkat babies who are super strong necked. So they start to throw themselves away from you and make the feeding really awkward or they're looking one direction. So you've got one side good because they're facing you. You turn your baby around to feed, they're facing the wrong way. Again, mums say, I've got a good side, I've got a bad side, blaming themselves. I've got good flow, poor flow. You know, I'm sore on one side, not sore on the other side. Your baby might not be able to get onto you properly. You're thinking it's you and it's not. Again, we just release off the baby so they can turn both ways and then you get the better feeding. If your baby's calmer, you get the better feeding. So if they've had that traumatic delivery and they're buzzy, plan C-section babies are really big on this, <coughs> then they're thrashing around, they're very hard um, to feed as well. So thank you for the question. When should colic start to ease? Okay, the classic, we've got a whole, we can talk about this quite nicely. The classic is 12 weeks, right? So you're here 12 weeks. And again, that's kind of one of the myths that you, that you hear, like all babies cry, no babies sleep, all babies are hard to breastfeed. So you just get all that chucked at you but no one actually helps you fix your baby quicker. So 12 weeks, look it up on the internet, look it up in the book, is 12 weeks. 12 weeks can feel like 12 years when your baby is screaming. So even if it goes in 12 weeks, do you want to wait that long? Or do you want to help your baby quicker and have them better in a couple of weeks? Which is what I would try and do, proactively help that baby get better. But there'll be causes. So this is what we're talking about. Your symptom, the baby symptom is colic. They're crying. They've got winds. So colic is trapped wind, really. What's the cause? What's happened at the delivery, which has caused your baby to have colic? And can you fix that so they are better sooner than 12 weeks? So 12 weeks is basically they've grown out of their colic. The question is, will they even grow out of the colic? So the biggest trigger of colic is antibiotics, in my opinion antibiotics at delivery. L loads and loads of mums and babies get antibiotics at delivery. If you had a C-section, you definitely got antibiotics. <coughs> Those antibiotics go through you to your baby's tummy, direct at the delivery. Also, they are then in you, which knocks out your good bacteria, and then that's the bacteria that you're passing to the baby. You're meant to be passing the good stuff through your milk to your baby. So then you've had the antibiotics to change that. So who says that in 12 weeks, the baby's tummy bacteria is gonna be back to normal? That's, that might not happen. So I don't even know necessarily where this 12 weeks comes from. I think if it's a true, um, uh, just baby small and got to outgrow it, then 12 weeks might be about the time. But what happens if your baby's had four lots of antibiotics, which is not uncommon, I see that. You could have had antibiotics at C-section, then the mum gets antibiotics because her scar got infected, and then the baby has a temperature, baby gets some more antibiotics, then the mum has mastitis, got some more antibiotics, so the baby's been exposed to four. That probably isn't gonna clear in 12 weeks because the baby's got to get that good bacteria back in. So again, we put in the good bacteria, put in the good probiotics for the baby, after this, what I'll do is in the stories, I'll put links to what I'm talking about, okay? So the probiotics for the baby to reset the gut bacteria and get them better before 12 weeks, if they even do get better. I have um, all the time, I have a mum come in or parents come in and they're bringing their baby to me at 11 weeks, 12 weeks, 13 weeks. So they're saying, we thought our baby was gonna get better at 12 weeks. And at 12 weeks, they're still bad. So they waited 12 weeks with a crying baby, and in 12 weeks it comes along, they're not better. Okay, plan C section is still battling winds 16 weeks later. Exactly what I'm saying, thank you. So you might have waited for 12 weeks to your, for your baby to get better. So the antibiotics at the C section might not have allowed your baby's gut bacteria to get back. So my question is, have you tried probiotics? Have you used probiotic to put the good stuff back into your baby? There was even, <clears throat> I read some research where it showed that breastfeeding 
wasn't strong enough to correct antibiotics. So breast milk has all the goodies in it. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to put the goodies into your, tum your baby's tummy. But remember, that's subtle, it's gentle, it's nature. Antibiotics are bang, they're hard. You need them to be like that because the antibiotics have to work. When you've got an infection, you don't want to be waiting for this gentle little thing to work. They're in and they work. It kind of makes sense to me that antibiotics beat breast milk, which is gentle and subtle. So, and we want them like that. Therefore, you've got to put a bit extra back in. So you've got to put those um, friendly probiotics. You take them, you pass them on, or you give them direct to baby. And um, all of this is in videos that I've done on calmingcolic.com um, and in the online course that I've got. So I go through antibiotics, probiotics, what you do, the whole lot. Okay. Okay, so, um, uh, so Sarah, depends how long you've been on them. So let me know. Are four lots of antibiotics? Yes, so you've had, okay. Right, I'm trying to remember what we're gonna do. Okay, here's how I figure out how long to take the antibiotics for. There is research out there that shows that you can give probiotics to a baby to make them healthier. So, in my mind, I might think every baby can have some, pro some probiotics, through the mum maybe, and they breastfeed them through. Um, Okay, she's been on the probiotics for a month. Okay, I'm getting to it. This is this will answer that. Every baby could have one month, even if they're not colicky. The benefits of col of a probiotics can be improved immune system. I mean, it's it's huge. So if you want, if it's winter and you want your baby to have a bit of a better immune system, probiotics could help. If you've had a hospital visit and you've been exposed to bacteria in the hospital, you might want to bump up and give them help. Okay. So every baby could have one lot of probiotics, which is a month, one bottle, one month. If you have a C-section, okay? So lots of the research shows that the C-section, because the baby doesn't pick up the bacteria through the birth canal, they miss out on that. So you might think, I'll give some probiotics because I had a C-section. However, I see babies that have ad had antibiotics and they're just as bad as the C-section um, C babies. So at C-section, you get antibiotics. So we got every baby could have one lot. C-section baby, okay, they need another lot of probiotics. They've had antibiotics, they need another lot. And the mum on here is saying that they've had four lots of antibiotics. So you're looking like this many months. This is totally how I work it out. I've not read research on this, but this is what I would be saying to a mum who came to see me in clinic. You might be wanting to do two, three, four, bottle four months of probiotics because a baby that's had a c-section of four lots of antibiotics that's different from a baby that has had one lot okay so see that distinction that they might need more um, probiotics okay here's how to figure out if they're um, when to come off them <clears throat> so this again what I say to parents when they, they're bringing their baby in do a bottle finish the bottle so say if the the symptom that your baby has is wind colic reflux um, loads of watery poos or constipation say if that's what they've got you go on the probiotics they start to get better fit at the end of the month at the end of the bottle you finish the probiotics give it a week how's your baby have they gone from one or two nice poos a day are they back to six, seven, eight little watery, sharty poos. If they go back to that, do another bottle. Do it again for a month, try and come off them. So the whole point of the probiotics is you go in, you fix, and then you come off them. Because they go in the gut and then they grow and they stay there. So you come back off them and then we hope that the baby's fixed, so sorted. But keep repeating until um, the baby's fixed. If, it's, if that's still not working, then drop me, a, uh, drop me a message and then I'll try and help you out from that. You might have to change the strain of the probiotic. Okay. So, um, yes, been on the probiotics for a month. That might, be, that might be not long enough then because I think you said you had four lots of antibiotics. So I'll be thinking four months. So keep going. Um, uh, probiotics constipate the baby. Uh, the, the main side effect of the probiotics can be making a bit more wind. I'm not sure about the constipation, 
there might be more to it than that. Gavascon really constipates the baby. Uh, so give me a bit more info. Um, okay, so if you're on the probiotics and you're hoping, again, you're hoping that's the quick fix. Remember, there's no quick fix because every baby's different. They're complicated, they're random. They do things that you can't really explain. If you're hoping for the quick fix, that's great. They're, they're a much better fix, long-term cause fix, um, than just drops to take wind out or something. So you're trying to fix the cause, which is great with the probiotics. But if there's more to it than that, you might need more help. There might be other things to do, which could be the physical treatment. So I think you said induction, C-section. The induction babies are buzzy. Okay, so on to, if you go on the website and you'll see this, this is my baby birth try, how to help babies. There's a quiz on there to see which um, section your baby is in. You help babies on the physical and then the tummy, which is the probiotics, and then the stressy side, the buzzy side. So these babies, these little espresso babies, I call them, and, and there's videos on them. They're buzzy. Induction babies are quite buzzy. So the characteristic of the induction is maybe the, the birth not happening and then bang, you get induced and it's strong and it's hard. And you can imagine that baby is like, wow, I'm straight in to big contractions. No little build up, no kind of wakey, wakey, you're gonna be born today, bang. Those babies come out stressy and often the mum's quite stressy as well because it's so strong. So you've got a baby that's buzzy, comes out like, wow, I'm born today. Then you've got C-section. So then they come out, so you've got them possibly froggy or they've been stuck. So you've got the little meerkat and then you've got the buzzy baby, the little espresso baby. So if the probiotics aren't fully helping them, you've got to address the other thing. You've got to address the physical, which is unwinding them. Then the stressy buzzy side, which again is the craniosopy and the calming, the massage, the skin to skin, all that kind of stuff, the, the um, deep breathing and meditation whilst you're feeding, which has been shown to calm the baby and help colic. That's on the website. Again, um, I've done a video on that. So you have to look, uh, this is what I do, you have to look holistically at your baby, physical, tummy, and stress system. So um, if one's not working, is there bits on the other that needs a little bit of help on there? Okay, let's check the questions. So you can see that we're just going round, talking about the same things. This is the same thing for all babies. We're just addressing um, how to help all babies really. So even though every baby's different, every delivery's a bit different, you can start fitting them into categories. Little frog baby, little meerkat baby, buzzy baby is the espresso baby. The, the baby that doesn't feed well because they're on and off. The baby that hates laying on their back because they got to, they got to stretch out like this. The baby that's had antibiotics, they can have like 10 little poos a day, like little watery ones. So my question would be, uh, Sarah who's had four lots of antibiotics, Oh no, you've got the constipated baby. So um, maybe you do. So there's the constipation. No, you didn't. So my question is, if you've had four lots of antibiotics, is your baby having maybe one or two decent poos, but lots of little watery poos, these little shards. So every nappy has got a little sharty poo in it. Have you got that? If you're still doing that, if the baby's still doing that, the antibiotics haven't quite got there yet got to top up keep topping up and then you'll get one or two good poos a day hopefully okay probably gone through a bit more than I thought because I've just covered everything um okay visited the osteopath twice okay um I usually I say usually about four treatments for a baby I would even try to do them two in a week two in a week get get the baby can handle it two or three weeks, four treatments in, to unwind all this, baby can be a lot better. So that's what I would try and do, although it's, um, I'm quite busy, it's difficult to get them in, um, that would be my ideal. Two might not be enough treatments, um, and then go back to look at intolerances. That's, 
that's fine. I would I would do that. I would go back for to look at the intolerances. What the doctor, the GP could do, I don't know because you can't test for it necessarily. Um, but they might put you on a different formula, and then you'll have the answer. So if they're better on the formula, all good. However, uh, sorry to bad news again. Some babies get way worse on the GP formulas, so that's a possibility as well. Antibiotics are a big trigger of intolerance. Okay, so even if your baby has an intolerance, what we would hope is, is it's temporary, but you have to start actively fixing that by putting the good um, bacteria in, put the probiotics in, and that can help the intolerance. So if antibiotics were the trigger, then the probiotics will help. Hopefully the baby doesn't have an intolerance. You just, it's just that current time they need a little bit of strengthening. And I had a baby yesterday, something to do with this, um, trying to think. I think it was that the uh, the dad brought the baby in, uh, uh, the toddler, and the toddler had in, the intolerance. No, got it. So little boy, um, older, five or six, had come in for some sleep stuff. Tummy was dodgy. Children always get dodgy tummy at the same time. Great place to start with the ba uh, babies and children. Um, and we started using the probiotics. And the dad said to me yesterday that they started giving the little boy dairy again they had thought he was dairy intolerant so this bit this he's um, like five or six so he's a bit older they started giving him dairy again and no problems at all he was chuffed with what the probiotics had done and um again had never had never heard of them until i um mentioned them to him because the little boy had tummy problems okay so i actually explained this to him then yesterday that the antibiotics can correct the intolerance. So I would say, you know, you could have a couple more with osteopath. You could use probiotics to help if the baby is awful. Babies that have a proper intolerance are awful. They are arching, they're screaming, their skin can be eczema, they can have blood in their pews, mu uh, poos, they can be mucousy. They're definitely allergy baby. They're, they're kind of this end of uh, the babies that I see that are screaming. And um, can a breach impact on colic? Um, yes, breach babies are super, super like this. Really, really froggy. So have a look at this. You fill your baby up with milk, they have a big feed. Would you like to be doing this with a big feed in your tummy? That would be uncomfortable. If you've got a bit of wind doing this, might trap the wind in your tummy so there's a physical way again how does the delivery affect your baby how does the physical part affect the digestion it's possible so and you might not be putting this together how is my baby being breech affecting their colic because they're like this so full tummy doing this doing this might make them throw the, throw the milk up they could have a bit of reflux like if you imagine squishing a baby like this, it's gonna come out somewhere. This can be trapping the baby, uh, the wind in here. So with the treatment, you unwind. Now look how much space the tummy's got. If there's wind in here, there's more space. So it might not cause as much wind. So I would say, yes, the breech baby can, from one, one stage removed maybe, because you're looking at the physical bit, but breech babies would normally be, would normally have C-section, so they get antibiotics. So again, lovely example. We got to look at everything. The physical, because they're like this. The tummy, because the antibiotics. And the breech baby, if they knew that the baby was breech, might have been a planned C-section, because baby's breech, let's do a planned C-section. Those babies can be jumpy, the little espresso baby. They're buzzy. So the baby might have been asleep inside you, and then boom, they're out, bright lights. They're being born, you were born today and you didn't know it and you're out. So those babies take on that buzziness. So you need to calm them down. The nice thing about the plan C-section is that mum might be calm. So you, the, whole, the whole situation with the mum and the dad is quite calm, that's nice. But you might wake a baby up and then they're born and then they stay jumpy like this. Right, fantastic. So if you got any more questions, then um, send me a message, send me a DM out, and I can put them out into videos as well. I hope this has helped. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do this um, every Wednesday, because uh, I'm not in clinic, 
but then I'll try and add in some evening ones and things as well um, around my children as well. Um, yeah, ask me these questions. Or anything I've mentioned, I'll try and put up um, in the stories. Um, CalmingCollect.com is the website. Everything I've said on here is split into different videos on the YouTube channel as well. And my ebook's on there. My course is on there. The course is basically all the videos on a page, but easy to watch. You know, there's videos on formula. If you've had antibiotics, watch those ones. If you had a C-section, watch those ones. So it's just breaking it all down and then what to do. I'll put up the probiotics that I use, where to get those from. Um, yeah, and, and the idea is to help you understand your baby and then give you some fixes for your baby. Um, you could even ask me, you could tell me where you live and if I can find out where maybe a cranial um, osteopath is that's local that can help you. Right, let me know. I hope, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you did find it helpful and we'll just keep doing this and building it up. Thanks so much. Have a good day.